You are listening to the Onboard Podcast, where we share stories and tips on how best to onboard your customers. Make sure to follow us on social media. So hello everyone to this episode of our podcast where we talk customer experience with top experts in the field. Hello Aurore and thanks for uh, making uh, the time to join us this uh, this week. Uh, without further ado, let's start. Um, I'm going to start jumping right directly and Aurore, can you tell us about yourself and why customer experience is a very important subject for you? Yeah, uh, so I'm working in the tech scene for 13 years. Uh, I've been before sales and then I've moved to customer experience because I really love to interact with customers and because we are nothing without our customers. There is no point to build a company if you don't have any customers. Of course. And uh, just here to follow back, basically when we talked like uh, startups should be centered 100% of their time around their customers. That is that is a very staggering, staggering fact. It's all it's always good to build a good product, but also it's the best thing is to focus on the customers. So can we just dial back a little bit and you tell us about your background and how did you end up here? Like, let's go many, maybe to your first company. Um, in customer experience, uh, I've been there really casually. I've seen one day uh, a job announcing the um, in e-commerce website, a manager of e-commerce feed for e-merchants. And uh, it was a super, super technical product. And I've built all the onboarding team for this company. And I really learned how to simplify things to make it easier for customers. And I really fell in love with this job. And from there, I just wanted to follow up in the customer experience jobs. It's really important for me. I think customer experience is like um, not a way of life, but it's a way of thinking. It's uh, I'm really sad when I see people just thinking that customer experience jobs are just something than to go a better job. There is no better job than customer support and customer experience because you work with product, we work with marketing, you work with the customer, you are at the center of the company. And without your feedback, marketing will be totally disaligned and product team will be totally disaligned and we will develop a product that people don't want. So you are crucial to a company, so there is no better job in the startup than customer support and customer experience. I really like how, how you put them together and uh, say tying all the, of the different departments within a startup or within a company to customer experience. And let me just uh, reference this, uh, this saying, build something people want. And if you don't talk to the customers and if you don't, don't build something that really people need and value, there's no market and the startup is usually doomed to fail. So that is really an excellent point to raise. and. Um, I would love to ask you, uh, what is like the typical day in your job? Um, I think it depends uh, on the stage of the starter where are you working. For example, right now I'm working at a client and we are super, super early stage. So my, my daily job is to do user experience interviews. So I call users and ask them everything about our app what they understand, why they don't understand, what the next feature they want, what yep. is the feature they don't want, what they will miss, and etc. And I gather all this feedback for the product team, and then I do meeting with the product team saying, okay, this week I have this, this, this feedback, super interesting. And we talk about it and we put it on product board. It's super useful tool to work with the product team and customer care team. And so it's really my daily job. And when I have email from customer, I answer customers, but mainly it's to having feedback right now. But when your company has reached the product market fit, you just um, have to do another job. It's, it's more like scaling processes, uh, creating macros, creating FAQs and managing a team is totally different if you are 
post product market fit or pre product market fit? Yeah, um, let, let's say a good segue um, to the next point, which is about the good about the product market fit part. If you can tell us uh, what is also a uh, how do you build processes during a product market fit? How you take the knowledge that you have built by talking to customers and scale it into uh, processes like that can that people can repeat after you and uh, that can scale with how with a company. Um, let's say for example, you mentioned FAQs and stuff like that. What are the best tools that you might recommend or use during uh, this time? There is no best tool. I'm not so dogmatic about tools. There is a lot of really cool tools. And my, my point is, it depends on, on the stage of your company. For example, when you are early stage, it's super cool to use only Intercom because the design of Intercom is super friendly, so you will have a lot of feedback. But then when you have a lot of, lot of customers, maybe it's better to have Intercom just for pre-sale and then ha having a ticket solution like Zendesk, for example. But it's my own point of view and there is a other tool. Help Scout is really cool as well. There is no better tool th than other. It just depends on your needs. So you have to benchmark your tool, not according to what your friends or what other people in the industry use. Is You have to do your benchmark, benchmark according to your needs. Yeah, that is a, also a very good point because even in engineering team, uh, people usually get lost with this concept. And it is always about analyzing the business, analyzing the business needs, uh, and then finding what is the best solution for that. So, um, oh, can you tell us about um, one of the companies that you went through and how did you, uh, how did you talk to customers? What is, what is the methodology that you use while talking to customers? What kind of questions did you ask, etc.? Uh, regarding when you are in pre-product market fit, or uh, what in which which stage of startup? We can go through the stages one by one. We have all the time. <laughs> okay. Um, I think when you are pre-product market fit, it's, it's super important to ask them what they love in your product. Uh, what are the feature dream features and what they will miss if you doesn't exist anymore I think it's super important but uh, it's uh, I think it's all those questions are in one of the superhuman CEOs interview um, for example right now at client we really really use all of what superhuman did because they are super sharp for tailoring a product for customers and the most important thing is to to ask those questions to people who love you a bit because if you ask to someone who doesn't love you they will say I don't like that or I I I want this, 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 and if you develop the product for people who doesn't love you, it won't make love you more. Just uh, you have built something and you will lose the, your first love customers. And I think it's super, super important when you ask feedback to, to user to say to you, we we've um, released this feature, thanks a lot, you help us to improve um, and it's super important to make the first customer part of your adventure fair enough and uh, actually what I what I want to ask here uh, when we talk about uh, about customer customer feedback one of the main issues uh, that rise is usually feedback that can drive the product development in a wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And now, what method did you did you guys use to distill that feedback and find which is the right feedback for you? Because as you know, customers can go in all directions and one of the best sayings from accelerators like Y Combinator is usually they say, um, for, you should ask customers for problems and then find the solutions uh, yourself. So what do you think about that? We are totally agree, uh, uh, and that's what I do as well with the product team. When I see a problem, I just say to the product team, "Okay, I see the problem," and they can imagine a better solution th than me. But uh, what we do at Client is that we have a system of rating feedback. So we know, for example, that a feedback 
of someone who never used our app or used just one or two time our app not interesting for you so we will rate it with a really really low grade and we take we we don't take so much in consideration this feedback but if it's someone who use daily the, the product so we will take the feedback in high consideration fair enough um did you have any success stories with the with customers that can that can shine and can show an example for other companies because always doing customer experience as a customer myself i would love if the company values uh, their customers and values me and the input that i have so did you have any uh, success stories with your customers before yeah i have a super funny story uh, when i worked at shine uh, it was on a saturday and my collaborator Yanis, who is working right now at Spendesk, sent me a message on Slack. Oh, we have a problem. A user is super upset because she lost her card, credit card, and you know we have to charge it another another card if we have to send her. And she wants to do really bad reviews on Facebook, etc. And I told him, okay, a credit card is five euros gave her for free and we will see and after this girl became the our most biggest fan in facebook so if someone on facebook say oh i didn't like shine she was oh why you say that they are the best i love them <laughs> and like four weeks after she applied to be part of the team and she's still working at shine as custom uh, as um, kyc manager that is a, indeed a great story and yeah that is indeed a great story and it tells how 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 just a simple act of kindness from a human to another can like snowball and create a more of a more belonging effect for the customer and that's what we want uh, eventually customers that love the product and that are ambassadors for for, uh, for the brand so now in terms of culture, which is uh, the trendy word right now, I suppose. What what do you think is the best way to create a, uh, a customer centric culture within w within the organization? Because, may, for example, from my background, it's really hard to embody that within the product team. And it can be uh, it can be difficult to bring people uh, to to uh, to understand why talking to customers is important. Some companies may even go to the point of recommending that even the engineers or everyone within the team should do uh, support calls. So, from your perspective, what is the best way to do uh, to embody the customer experience or the, uh, or the customer-centric culture within the team? I think there is no truth, but there is two options. The first option is to do everyone on support and to ask to developers and to product team. And even though the CEO should do to answer customers, I ha I've had a really, really cool experience with Help Scout. One day I was on the chat and I was asking something because I wanted to try Help Scout and the CEO answered me and I was blown away i was wow the ceo of such a big company and it was super cool because i, I thought okay the guy is the ceo of a ticket company and, and he answers his customers so he leaves the value of his own company so i really really respect help scout and the team at help scout they are really impressive and but in other ways some people say it, but if everyone does support, that means that everyone can do what you do as support agent. And that's right in another way, but I think it's important, at least if people of your company doesn't do support with you, is that they shadow you. They one hour per month, per week, they just sit down next to you and see how it is work, how do you answer to customers. Because sometimes when an engineer is doing support, he, he will see, ah, oh, it's really pain to do that, 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 but I can solve this just doing that, that, and he can save a lot of time for support agents. For us at Onboard, that's one of the things what uh, we did initially, and it led us to do uh, at least five, five pivots in terms of product. Every time we hack, uh, we hack a prototype, we take it to a customer, 
we test it out with them. And the, the day we stopped building uh, building these uh, these uh, prototypes or these uh, fast fast applications is when we took uh, the product to a customer and the customer said, hey, I love this. This is what I want, but the user interface is so, so shitty. I can't put this in front of my customers. So that day we knew that the, we need what we need to nail in terms of functionality, and now we can get to the build phase of the product. So it was a very fun uh, fun way to test and iterate. And now uh, one of the challenges, of course, is to bring that culture uh, to the team and make it make it one of our values. And those are the challenges of founders, I guess. So. From from a product perspective, I think I think it's the best way to build products um, to be to have them centered around customers. And if we look to many of the startups that have succeeded over uh, over the last few years, making unicorn exits or uh, IPOing with large with large amount raising large amounts of capital, I think usually the founders embody that customer centric culture, and uh, that's. That's the best way to build products right now. So, just to dial it back here, uh, in terms of your experience within the field, you have you have went through uh, multiple episodes in your career and uh, with multiple companies and multiple phases. I would love for the audience to 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 hear to hear you sum it up re- really quickly and uh, what what is like the number one learning from from uh, from each experience. I think my number one learning is um, treat your customer as you want to be treated. And customer will be always on your side. And even though people's or customers are really upset and they they are super harsh sometimes, be kind with them because sometimes your kindness will, will turn them into ambassador and will turn them to love you really much and it's super funny in my career i've had customers who followed me in all my companies and it was super funny yeah well to to your point here customer experience is uh, is all about creating and valuing that human connection and i guess that that is a good example of that someone valuing the the human connection more than the product i suppose (laughs) Yes, yeah, sure. But I think it's super important because, you know, there's so much startup, so much product, and sometimes you, you have a lot of competitor. The only difference is the relationship that you create with your customer. If the relationship is strong enough, people won't go to the competitor. Fair enough, fair enough. And uh, yeah, indeed. So if, if we go and right now and, and sum up most of uh, what we talked about today, if you were right now set out to... Um, set out to build a company and you had one value that you should embody in the team, what would be that value for, for you? Oh, wow. Um, I think ethics and, and staying true. Some company has a super harsh culture, for example, Uber is super tough, but they are, they are true because when you go, when you do all the process, you know it will be hard. You know you will learn a lot, but you know it will be hard. And on the contrary, I don't like companies who are not true. For example, they will say our own value is kindness, but when you work inside, there is no kindness anymore. I, I really like people who are super true with themselves to, to build this value and to promote this value. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, um, thank you, Aurore, for for your time. Uh, I had a blast talking to you today. Um, make sure to uh, to tune next week for next episode of our of our podcast. And uh, this was the customer experience podcast. I'm really happy to have you uh, with us today. And uh, see you soon. Thanks a lot.